Hello there, sword friends. Today I have a rare opportunity to unbox a sword, which is in this box right here, and should be an Evolution Blades or a Motohara Blade. Now, uh, sword friend Carlo recently purchased this sword and is using me as a bit of an intermediary to ship. Now, I've, I've sold some swords, bought some swords, all that kind of stuff uh, from this sword friend, and graciously he has sent it my way to take a look at, and then I will send it off to him. But um, I have recommended Evolution Blades, Motohara Blades, as, well, one of the best production swords that you can buy out there. Production isn't really the greatest explanation of what they are. They're relatively small batch, relatively unique pieces that are of a very high quality and, and a subsequent <laughs> subsequent high price. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much this one is, but I have two older uh, Evolution Blades and I really, really like them. If you are a Japanese swordsmanship practitioner, it's tough to find a better training tool. If you are a uh, a collector of swords or just want a really awesome katana and you want it to be really well and you like modern steels, Evolution Blades is a great place to, to get a sword. Um, they do really, really amazing work and blah, 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 and I've talked about them a lot and you can watch those videos. But the point is, there's a new one here. I'm going to open it up because I've heard that they do even better work now than the ones that I had before. And this is a good chance for me to see one brand new up close in person. So here we go. Don't fuck up Sword Friend Carlos Sword. All right. Well, this is pretty cool. Okay, so we got angry face down here. A mustached, a mustached angry man. And then I'm not sure what to make out of the Fuchi, but there are, it looks like angry eyes. The the theme is overall pretty neat. I got some dragon Manuki. And the handle shape, well, first off, the Ito is impeccably done. This is absolutely rock solid. Doesn't move around at all. Very, very tight to the touch. And you've heard me comment on this on a number of other sword related videos but if you push on these things they should really not move and like if you apply a lot of pressure it should not move and that's exactly what this is <laughs> can really lean on it doesn't move around in the slightest um it's black on black so it's a little tough to see but the the leather has like a you can probably hear my hand it slides around it's smooth but has like a little bit of tacky feeling to it uh it feels like relatively high quality leather very, very nice overall. The, the black on black has reasonably nice, uh, or an okay Semigawa skin under here. I'm not sure if it's fully wrapped. I'm not gonna take it apart or anything like that either. But when you do black on black, spending a lot of money on a really expensive skin is, is probably not the most useful thing to do because the black really obscures it. And so doing a reasonable skin is probably a better choice. The, lo the nodules in here are not small, so it's not like a piece of garbage skin, uh, but nor is it like something with an emperor node or something that presumably costs a lot more money. Shape-wise, has a very pleasant shape. A little, little deeper sweep along the, the back of the blade. We have a partial wrap of Samegawa. There's a slight transition that I feel here, but overall very minor. Looks like a very solid Koiguchi Shiridome that are glued in and of a nicer quality. You can also make out the Seppa that appear to have a little bit of detailing or kind of dental work on them along the outside. The Saya, which has a nice transition. This is one thing I think Motohara does really well. Uh, they thin out and get thicker towards the top. Black on black with some blacky black. This is a handsome theme. I'm not gonna not gonna lie. Very pretty, pretty sword. The Hibaki, what a looker. It's very pretty. Looks like a Roku showed copper, or maybe some other kind of copper alloy because it looks a little different than the than the Sepa. Has kind of a little twang to it. It's got some file work in it. A little bit of texture and detail. It's an absolutely wonderful feeling sword, incidentally. B beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure what this sword is made out of. I believe it's the SKS3, maybe it's L6. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. It looks like there's just a little bit of, 
I mean, it looks like rust a little bit. It looks like a little bit of rust is forming in some spots on the blade. Uh, along the hamon, it's very subtle, but but it's there. All right, sword friends, this is a little bit unfortunate. It does seem like there is some rust beginning to form along the ha, along the edge of the sword, along the hamon in sporadic spots, but running kind of the, the length of the blade. Now, uh, the rust is minor, and if I rub off the oil, which does appear to be coated, it doesn't appear to be due to insufficient oil coating or uh, due to negligence in the part of Evolution Blades or Motahar or anyone in the, in the process here. Uh, I'm not sure if the wood used here is not fully dried. I'm not sure if some sort of moisture got in the scabbard at some point. I'm not sure, but I digress. The point is, I have some unfortunate news to deliver to Sword Friend Carlo, and then, you know, I, I'm in an odd spot as a middleman. So we'll hopefully, hopefully everyone will be friends at the end. Point is, though, that uh, there's some rust that's beginning to form here. This would be a disappointment, admittedly, if I were to get this sword brand new. If this were my sword, and I opened up the box, and there was rust beginning to form along the edge, that would be that would be a real bummer. Now, um, I'm pretty confident that the rust looks minor. It looks like this, like spilled coffee stains a little bit along the along the edge, at least in terms of uh, the problematic. Doesn't look like it's pitted. It doesn't look super bad, and some of it comes off when I take my blue shop towel, which is this doohacky right here. I use this blue shop towel because it, it's not particularly coarse, it doesn't mar the polish, and if I try to clean or wipe off the oil, which again appears to be reasonably liberally, you know, applied here, it doesn't look like those spots are because the oil came off them or something like that. All the, the rust that I could see appears to be under a coat of oil, which is kind of strange. Anyway, it's not particularly humid out where I live, it's not particularly cold, I, I'm not sure exactly what the deal is, but I digress. Uh, Wiping off some of the oil takes off some of that some of that rust, which means if I were to apply Mother's Mag or do some sort of other kind of polishing uh, of some kind, I'm guessing that uh, I could I could resolve this and and you know have the rust gone. But admittedly, that's not something that you're expecting to do with a brand new sword of of any price point, let alone one uh, of this one. Because I'm speculating that this is you know a two three three and a half, four thousand dollars, somewhere in there. I'm not sure exactly how much this sword is, but um, anyway, the rust on it is is a, is a bit of a disappointment. And hopefully, um, hopefully Sir Fran Carlo, Carlo and, and Jason at uh, Evolution Blades will sort it out and determine if it's a problem. It's the future and forgive me, sword friends, I am, I'm both old and forgetful and therefore don't remember what I said in the previous recording and I'm not particularly great at editing. So if you hear repetition, my apologies. But I think where I left off was I saw some things that appeared to be rust on the blade, I was disappointed and I was reaching out to contact some people and see what they had to say about it. So uh, sort of friend, Carlos wanted to have this uh, cleaned up naturally and sort of friend Jason was happy to do it. So I sent it back to sort of friend Jason at Evolution Blades. He touched it up. Now there's some uh, thought that it was not rust and that it was some sort of dust or wood residue or something like that from the scabbard that gets caught in the I guess very small open areas of the blade. Um, I it could be etch that has rusted in effect, but to a very very small degree. Because toothpaste is what I tried first to clean it off at the suggestion of sword friend Jason. That I took some toothpaste, rubbed it on the blade a little bit. Didn't take very long, and and honestly, a lot of that uh, what appeared to be rust was abated and removed from the blade, but not not a hundred percent. And this is not mine, and it's very expensive and it needs to to be in pristine condition and I don't want to screw it up so I wasn't particularly happy to uh, really lean into it or at least not with toothpaste I could use a more aggressive chemical or something like that to remove it which I'm pretty confident would actually work if I used mother's mag or something like that but then some details in the blade might have been pulled out so uh, so I sent it back to evolution blades the sword friend uh, sword friend Jason over there did his magic with it and now we will see how it looks and if it's all good then well then I will say goodbye to it again and it will go go off to sword friend Carlos who will hopefully uh, be very happy happy with the sword and Well, before I wipe it off, maybe just useful to show you what I'm seeing over here. I think I see the spots 
where Jason cleaned it a little bit, I think, is what I'm seeing here. Uh, and it looks to me like there are still marginally small dark areas along the edge to a lesser degree, but still present. All right, sword friends, unfortunately there is some sort of persistent rusting or discoloration issue regardless of what's causing it uh, to happen here. And I'm not sure what to do, but mine isn't to know. I will inform, take photos, and let sword friend Jason and sword friend Carlos decide uh, how to how to come to resolution. And I'm, I'm probably not going to follow up with it unless there's something special, unique, fun, or interesting to share. But at this point, I think it's, it's really between these two gentlemen. I, I would say, though, that I do think this is an anomaly of Evolution Blades. I have an SKS-3 blade supposedly made from the same steel, and it doesn't have the same rusting issues. I wipe it down, I leave it, sometimes for months at a time, unused, and when I take it out, it's always nice and shiny. So uh, I, don't, I don't have the same kind of discoloration problems. Uh, the other bit to note is I don't hear a lot of complaints about them, and I mean, honestly, even with the rusting, it's still still not a bad value. I, I say this not necessarily to steer this situation one way or the other, but if you were considering buying this, I can't blame you for saying, oh, well, that's a $3,000 sword that's coming rusty. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to buy that, but you could certainly do worse. Here's a $3,000 sword as well, uh, and while it has some other features like folded steels and complex lamination and some more precious metals involved, uh, it's still an inarguably worse product. <laughs> it came with loose Ito and a polish that no amount of toothpaste and spit shine is going to clean up. Um, and it costs the same amount as this sword. So even if they came rusty, this, I, in my mind, would still be the better product. And that's, um, I think, says less about the market, actually, and more about evolution plates. They really do make some, some really great stuff. And it's unfortunate that this one has the discoloration problem that it does, uh, but in all other ways, it's a really fantastic sword. And it's been fun to see how they've improved since the earlier generation products that I own. They are really nipped and tucked in a lot of different ways, and it feels... It feels really good too. So um, it's unfortunate that it has the issue it does, but for what it's worth, I think it's an anomaly and hopefully an amicable solution can be found between uh, Sword Friend Jason and Sword Friend Carlos. Anyway, uh, that's where I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the video, but I, I would do wanna say thanks to Sword Friend Jason for, I've enjoyed the conversations and talking about this stuff and Sword Friend Carlos for sending me the sword and letting me check it out and see how Evolution Blades has evolved. It's been, it's been a hoot. Uh, I hope you guys found the video interesting. Cheers and thanks for watching.